Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome back to a morning musings that is not really a morning musings. <laughs> Let me explain. Uh, in three days, it will be June the 20th. And 50 years ago, on that date, uh, I married a young woman, and we have had 50 fantastic years together. So, I'm going to take a little bit of time off to celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary. You know, got a, got a house setter and uh, pet setter and everything taken care of, um, and we're, we're just going to enjoy celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. And I wanted to share with you the story of my wife, which is really the story of my life. So I hope you'll indulge me. This is intended as a tiny bit of a tribute to the wonderful woman that's been my wife for 50 years. I moved to uh, Wetumpka, Oklahoma in 1968 as a business expansion for our family business. And got to know some people. The very first time I laid eyes on the gal that would become my wife, a friend of mine were sitting at the local Dairy Queen, and she and a friend drove by, and I was going, oh, look at that, yeah. And my friend, unbeknownst to me, had a mad crush on her, and he was instantly going, no, 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 she's not your type. Never, ne she would never, ever go out with you. Well, I took that as a personal challenge, and I bet him a steak dinner that I could get a date with her, and unbeknownst to me, he was terrified that I would get a date with her because he had been trying for a long, long time unsuccessfully. Now, I had a policy at the time, uh, arrogant little twerp that I was, that, <laughs> that I wanna, <clears throat> I'd only ask a gal out three times. And if she refused three times, I'd move on. You know, there's too many fish in the sea. I asked her out twice and got turned down flat. I won't go into the details of the third occasion, but it was a setup from word go. And I, uh, I asked her out the third time. And after a very long pause, by the way, we were walking along a dirt road in total dark because my friends had run off and left us, pushed the car down the hill, and left us alone. So here we are walking along in total darkness, and I'm going, man, i got to win this bet. So I asked her. And after a long pause, she, she goes, yeah, I think that will be okay. Yes. And we began dating. And so June 20th, 1969, we got married. Now that day started somewhat, you know, it was really rocky. <laughs> Let's put it like that. Uh, <clears throat> my dad was supposed to perform the wedding ceremony. My brother was supposed to be my best man. Uh, real early that morning, my dad and my brother and I went down to a local restaurant to have a cup of coffee before my dad was going to run my sales route for me and, and free up the day for me to run my sales route. Uh, or for me to k finish all of my uh, wedding doings. And so we went and had coffee on the way back. My dad is going, whoa, 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 something's wrong, something's wrong. And it appeared that he was having a heart attack. My brother and I had to help him into the house. And my brother and my dad and my mother got into a car and headed for Fayetteville, Arkansas, 200 miles away, I had to leave to go on my sales route, not knowing if my dad was alive or dead, way before cell phones. And I took off, and on the way to Norman, Oklahoma, I had a blowout. Now, I didn't have a dime of, of, of expense money. I wasn't supposed to be on the sales route that day. I crippled into a gas station about the time that it opened up. And I told the guy opening up, I said, look, you're not going to believe this, but man, I, I'm supposed to get married tonight, and 
I had a flat. I don't have a dime of money. And I, I need some credit, and I need a tire. <laughs> he kind of looked at me, and he goes, uh, you're right. I don't believe you. And I said, look, here's what happened with my dad. You know, I, I, I've got to have some help. And he said, no, I don't believe you. And finally, I happen to know at the time, the president of what at the time was known as Red and White Foods. And so I urged him, I said, listen, call down there. His office happened to be only a couple of miles away from where we were. <clears throat> I said, he knows me. He'll vouch for me, whatever. And he goes, you expect me to believe that? Look, as a 19-year-old kid, I look like I was 13. And I said, look, what, what's it going to cost? You know, if, if you call and he doesn't know me, says he doesn't know me, then what are you out? He said, well, you're right. So he called. Lo and behold, he got right straight through. And thankfully, uh, the gentleman said, you give Mr. Preston anything and everything he needs. You put it on my tab. I'll come take care of it. And the man got off the phone. He says, wow. Oh, okay. You know, <clears throat> didn't expect that. Looked in his inventory, did not, have, did not have a tire. Started calling around, calling around, calling around. He finally found a tire, downtown Oklahoma City, had to go get some, someone to put it on. And so the rest of the day, I would run into my stores, and everyone is going, Preston, aren't you supposed to get married today? You weren't supposed to be working today. And I said, well, yeah, I don't have time to explain. <laughs> Now, the wedding was supposed to take place at 8 o'clock. During the day, I would phone in and check with my sister, who was still on hand, to check, see if my dad was still alive, uh, to see what's going on. And I would tell her, get a hold of Jan, let her know I'm on my way. And the wedding was supposed to be at 8 o'clock. Jan was at the building with her entourage of two people, and, you know, the church building's this big. And uh, <laughs> I pulled into the parking lot in my sales truck, in my work clothes, at 20 minutes till 8. Jan had already told everyone, I'm not coming out until he's here. <laughs> we didn't know who was going to perform the ceremony. We didn't know what was going on. I very, they had a basin of water for me. I, I did a cat bath, put my clothes on, and at 8 o'clock, I walked out. And there's my brother-in-law, who's a minister, and here comes Jan down the aisle, and he just leans forward. And, of course, our eyes are this big, and we're, we're scared to death. We I still don't know how my dad's doing. And my brother-in-law just leaned up and said, just follow me. <laughs> we had we had no rehearsal. Okay, so they ran us up and down Main Street in the back of a pickup truck. Finally, we got free, and we headed to Wilburton, Oklahoma, Robbers Cave State Park. We had a cabin rented for our honeymoon. We pulled up, and sitting in the door doorway of our cabin is the biggest raccoon you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> well, I kind of honked my horn. He didn't move. I would lean out and grab some rocks and throw rocks at him, and all he would do is run at me and hiss. Well, if you know anything about raccoons, they, they are nasty, nasty mean. And we're sitting there wanting to get into the cabin, and this raccoon won't let us in. And at the time, I used to... Uh, I used to collect cigars. I didn't smoke, <clears throat> never even smoked one, but I used to, I used to collect uh, uh, baby birth cigars, wedding cigars, special occasion cigars. I looked in the glove box and there were a bunch of them. I unwrapped one and I turned to Jan and I said, okay, get the key to the cabin ready. And I said, I'm gonna throw a cigar and if he chases it, we gotta get up there and get in. And so I hollered at the raccoon. He paid attention to me, and I heaved a cigar, and boy, off he goes. I bet he knew. I bet he had done that a hundred times. We get into the cabin on our honeymoon, 
Needless to say, we're both nervous as we can be. Jan decides to go into the bathroom to get dressed. Suddenly she comes out screaming, and I rush to defend her honor. <laughs> and she points into the bathroom, and in the, in, this, in the bathtub of this cabin, there is a bundle of granddaddy long legs, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. In a, in a breeding frenzy, if you've ever seen Granddaddy Long Legs, and if you know about him, you know what I'm talking about. Neither one of us wanted to go back in the bathroom all night long. <laughs> but, you know, we made it through. And the last 50 years have been the greatest years of my life. Jan has been and continues to be the rock of my life. She has stood by me through thick and through thin. She has been my constant encouragement. Even in times which I suspected that she was depressed, she never, she never showed it. When I was depressed, she always sought to lift me up. She has been and continues to be my financial consultant. She continues to be the editor of my books. She continues to be the very best friend that I have in this world. I told someone just the other day, I couldn't have found a more perfect wife if the Lord would have given me a catalog and said, pick out what you want. So that's a little bit of the story of my wife, which is in reality the story of my life. Nothing could have brought me more joy and more happiness and more contentment and more fulfillment than to be married to Janice Preston. Thought I'd share my story with you so that you can understand why we're going to take a few days off and enjoy our 50th wedding anniversary. I have a treat for you. Daniel Rogers will be back and will be filling in for me as I, Jan and I hustle and bustle around here. We'll be in, we'll be out, but we're just going to spend some time together. I appreciate Daniel Rogers filling in for me. I know that you will enjoy him. And in the meantime, I look forward to being back with you on the flip side.